All right, we look a little different today, and uh, so we got the whole the whole team here of your full time ministry staff, and uh, we're missing Regina. She's on a trip um, and uh, coming back today, I believe. But so I asked these four guys to gather because this is our last uh, video with Jason. Now we could bring him back as a guest speaker. That's right. Um, yeah. You know, but uh, as far as on staff, this special will be our special the special guest speaker. And so I thought it'd just be fun for the four of us to just kind of gather together and, and uh, talk about a few different ideas uh, and just let, let you guys sit in on our conversation. Um, as I was thinking about what to even jump off with and, and lead into is uh, one of the things is teamwork, is that uh, I think the Bible tells us that we should be part of a team and, uh, and that we work together in ministry. And so any just off the top of your head, I've given them no almost no prep. I gave them just the idea that we might be talking about teamwork today. Any thoughts just off the top of your head, Bible passages or verses or narratives that deal with teamwork that you would say, that's something that tells me we should work together as a team? I think, well, just because, I guess, recency bias, we're going through John 17 with our youth on Wednesday nights, and so Jason even kind of mentioned some of the I think Sunday school lesson from this week was John 17. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But later on, uh, Jesus prays for his disciples and then all believers that they're one. Um, and just, it's almost like he is assuming in his prayer that it's going to be a unified mission. It's not long wolves running out and doing their own thing. And so um, I'm encouraged that he's praying at that point in high priesthood prayer for his disciples to be one. Right. But also reminded to pray, oh, we need one another. Um, and we need to be one in our mission. Yeah. Um, so that comes to mind for me. That's good. I'd say um, going back to Romans 12, 4, our a passage for this year, but um, even beyond that, the different uh, passages Paul talks about, different members of the body, but also different gifts of the Spirit. Um, we all, four of us, have different unique gifts, different personalities, different skill sets, and yet God uses all those things. Right. Uh, for us to work together as a team, as he does for any group of people. Um, it takes different skills, different gifts, different um, personalities for it, to, for it to come together and work right. as a body. Yeah, that's good. Aubrey, anything additionally? Uh, well, I mean, it just our weekly meetings that we have, even daily ones where we sit around and um, read the Bible and discuss it with each other, it, it uh, iron sharpens iron right. with each other. Uh, yes, we're all different, but at the same time, we all are um, living beings with God, and we have we absolutely love. Uh, Robert could testify to that. <laughs> Some other folks that have come in, how much we love God's word, all of us, and and just delving into that every day. Right, mm -hmm. that's good. All right, good. Thank you, Aubrey, for that. Um, in regard to uh, ministry, so uh, again, we're on a team together. We enjoy being on a team together. Um, but also being on the team, we've, we've been called into ministry. And uh, one of the things we talked about even this morning in our staff devotion time was, uh, again, even some statements that were made to Jason in our last deacons meeting this, just the other day about, you know, you're a minister. And so for all of us, we have specific roles, but... Let's talk for a second about what does it mean to be called to the ministry of the gospel? What does it mean called to the ministry versus called to a specific subset of ministry? Music, education, uh, youth, whether it would be missions or, or children. Like, what, what does that mean? Um, are you just called to music ministry or is, it, or is that a subset? You know, um, I shared, I think, last week when we were talking together, my call to ministry, I've always, it's always been clear to me that God called me to ministry first. Mm -hmm. um, now, what, you know, avenue in particular that might go, um, it has changed recently. Right. But always I go back to God called me to ministry. Yeah. And so ministry, in my mind, looks the same regardless if you're in education, music, youth. Ministry is building relationships, loving people. Um, yes, specifically I, in music ministry, you have a set of skills that's required, 
that's different from youth ministry or education, but in the end, we all have the same goal, right? And that is making disciples and urging others on to use the gifts that they have and to equip the saints for the work of the church. So, and some might not might not know this. I don't know how often Aubrey has told his story, but Aubrey, you actually served as a pastor. You you went and served as a lead pastor. Yes, I, that was my first two churches right. was lead pastor at both of those. But just like Jason said, I was called to the ministry uh, of just surrendering. And uh, my first step that God showed me was just to go to New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And while I was at New Orleans, I I said, well, all I got, my degree is in parks and recreation administration. So I guess I'm supposed to manage a gym. Uh, You know, that's kind of what I thought. So I went into education. But at the same time, some of the professors I had as I came and questioned them about what books and what do I really need to make sure I have a well-rounded ministry, Uh, they said, Aubrey, you got a pastor's heart. You need Mm -hmm. to be open to any segment of ministry because you've accepted the call to come and get your education and to learn more about being a minister. But... God may use you in different ways. And and I've seen that from being pastor to then becoming associate pastor, minister of education, and uh, those roles, I'm still called. In fact, it was kind of funny when I took over that education at, at Richland from being a lead pastor, I guess you'd say, and uh, people says, well, when, when are you going to uh, uh, accept the challenge again? <laughs> and it was like, I haven't left it. Right, right. Uh, I'm still doing what God wants me to do. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm still preaching. I'm still yeah. teaching. I'm still discipling. So, yes, a minister, that's the first step I think God really calls us to. Right. Mm-hmm. And, Tanner, you're the youth guy, right? That's what we always say. It's yeah. the youth guy. It's the <clears throat> but in, in the same way, your education was parks, uh Parks and recreation. And recreation. What was your? Uh, I was actually going. Uh, my degree program at LSU was civil engineering. Civil engineering. Yeah. And so, and, what, and you also were not right in the beginning going into uh, ministry, but then guy called you, and so you were planning to do what you can. Exp- I won't share your your story. You share yeah. your story. Well, in high school, <laughs> felt kind of the the call or the urge to ministry, but um, with just conversations with other people, knowing. That ministry can look like a lot of different things. You know, our our passage for your sermon this week even encompassed that of God gifts the church these different roles, apostles, teachers, and so on, f- to equip the saints for the work of ministry. So the whole church is to be involved in ministry. So I was like, well, I really like coaching and teaching, so I'm gonna go into that. And then to make a long story short, ended up with a interdisciplinary studies degree from Mississippi State. That is. Uh, almost describes Jason a little more of just like this Swiss army knife type <laughs> degree. Um, and yeah, but eventually was, was moving and transitioning into what it looks like to do ministry full time. But again, I think back to that Ephesians four passage of the whole church is called as mm. uh, God's children into a life of ministry. Some are um, then called maybe even further into what we see further up in that passage of preaching of ministering in specific areas mm-hmm. to equip the saints but I think further for what especially you three um, what that looks like is that pastoral heart of there's a lot of people in our church that can teach really well including right. you three but you three have such a pastoral heart of what it looks like to counsel people to walk through discipleship with people to actually minister to the heart and equip people to not only receive God's word, but apply it to their lives mm-hmm. and then go live it out and right. share it. So I think that's kind of part of what, um, again, I see in you three, but especially with Jason, of what it looks like to be equipped to do a lot of things like music ministry, but also to care for a personal soul. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's good. But what about, so uh, God calls us to a place, and there's no questions when he's opening doors and closing doors a lot of times, but at the same time, when you're discerning, you're also looking for uh, a team that you can play well with, you know, that you're going to fit in with. So 
Uh, anything in particular that, that drew any of, uh, of us to this specific team when you came and met and got to interact with the staff, anything that you look for for a team uh, to come into? Or even, Jason, as you're transitioning out, what were you looking for in regard to a team that you would were here, here for a time and now going to the next team? What do you look for in a team? Yeah, well, you know, Aubrey is the only one here sitting at this table. <laughs> when we came up. Um, they were in an interim pastor. Um, and um, I remember uh, – Is he saying something about the, why he's leaving? Yeah. No. <laughs> no, you know, it's the, interesting. The new team the members came on and, and then he's yeah. out. Yeah, It's interesting because I remember um, sitting in one of the meetings with the committee when we were coming here, and they asked me the question – um, was I okay coming, not having a pastor because, um, you know, they didn't know how long it would be before mm -hmm. they got pastor and, you know, not knowing who that would be. You never know what you're going to get. Never know what you're going to get. And I, I said, well, I said, but really, if y'all had a pastor, I don't know him any from Adam's house cat <laughs> any more than I would if he's Who's on come, the team or not on If the he's team. on the team or not on the team, really, it, it wasn't about that to yeah. me. It's never really been as much about that as it has been knowing and and sensing that God's spirit, that's that's where. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I've, for the most part, had the privilege of serving on in churches with staffs that have been great to, mm -hmm. you know, partner with and, and, and minister together. And so... Um, you know, I, I don't place as much weight on that because mm -hmm. I know if that's where God calls me to be, um, then he's going to allow those relationships to, to work together. Um, so that's kind of a cop out, <laughs> I guess, to your question, right? <laughs> well, right. I, no, I, I kind of agree because we don't choose the staff that's already there when we're that's right. interviewed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, can it make a difference if you feel that one one or two of them may not be in favor of you? Mm -hmm. And yes, that helps when you're praying. Right. Mm -hmm. But it all falls down to: Does God want me here or not? Mm -hmm. That's that. It's yeah, not that's ultimately. Yeah, because it's not about the money. It's not mm -hmm. about who's there. It's am I answering God's call of this is where He He wants me to be and. That's been my thing most of the time. God doesn't call me uh, to a position. He calls me to a place mm -hmm. to love a people right. and to disciple them. Yeah. And uh, he, he's in charge of the time frame. And guess what? None of y'all three were here when I came. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's all about that. But I can say that, uh, you know, working together with different people is Learning them, mm -hmm. knowing them, it's, it's been a really fun thing together. And yeah. you know, mm -hmm. I hope it's been for y'all too. Yeah. Well, and I would say, uh, I want Tanner to, to weigh in on it, but I would say some aspects of meeting the team could say, oh, God mm -hmm. is very clear you're closing this door because I these are this personality conflict I can see right off yep. the bat that this yep. is not going to be a good fit. Well, and mm -hmm. I will say this. There was one, one time in our past, I guess about – 13, 14 years ago, uh, we uh, had met with the committee, and um, I was we were a little caught and caught off guard that the pastor wasn't sitting in on the meeting, but the pastor wanted to talk to us separately after. And uh, within five minutes, we learned the committee and the pastor weren't on the same page. Mm -hmm. And the pastor's personality was very strong in some areas that, that when we got in the car, and we left that church from that meeting, but Cheryl and I both looked at each other and said, this is not where God wants us to be. Mm -hmm. And we drove 30 mm -hmm. minutes back um, to where we were staying and then called them on the yeah. phone and said, you know, we don't feel God is, is leading us beyond this point. Thank right. you for, you know, the time. Yeah. But there was that, that, was, that was the clearest sort mm -hmm. of indication of something like that um, in meeting right. uh, people that we've ever had. Yeah. And I've had that experience as well. But the thing is, typically, hopefully, you're, <laughs> if mm -hmm. everyone has the same mentality, we want to mm -hmm. play well on right. a team with others, 
then you find this team that's going to gel and you feel like, oh, this is a great, this is going to be a lot of fun to be a part of. Um, and God is calling me to a specific place um, to serve those people. But I do want to enjoy the people I'm serving with. So, mm-hmm. Tanner, thoughts on that? Yeah, I'd say, um, kind of like Aubrey and Jason were saying, that not necessarily called and in the interview process, going to go and just figure out everybody's personality type and <laughs> right. see if it all meshes well. But uh, for my experience in the interview process and, and all of that here, um, was kind of really enjoying you know, the search committee. I had a really good phone call with you after kind of a questionnaire that was a little bit of a, okay, this is, Brian and I kind of see um, some things you know, together. We mesh well on that. And then having lunch with the staff that day, was kind of the last little bit of like, okay, this is going to be good because they do work well together. They do mm. seem excited to actually do ministry together, and it seems genuine. And I know we've been in churches or been to churches, and you can tell when people put on mm-hmm. a fake <laughs> front or just seem to be getting along just so everyone else sees like they're getting along. Yeah. And it seemed very genuine, and after being here almost two years, I know it's been genuine. Mm-hmm. And so it was kind of that last little bit of affirmation, confirmation of this is a team that, you can slip into and feel like you're a part of a family and part of a team. Um, and so it does help, um, but I think ultimately God is calling to, like Aubrey said, to a place and to a people, because sometimes we're called to places where there is maybe a, a problem with someone on the staff, right. but mm-hmm. you are there to serve that people well. Um, yeah. yeah, God could call us to a team that is not well-functioning mm-hmm. to do something specific <clears throat> to help a church in a direction, no doubt. Mm-hmm. Um, but and y'all, you two obviously did really well when I paid y'all to, to behave well at Tanner's interview. So uh, <laughs> no, yeah, we do we do enjoy being together. We enjoy yeah. visiting. We enjoy <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> debriefing and and talking about God's word. Um, any uh, so we'll 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 take a moment. Is there any advice? Everybody here has been with other pastors and served with other pastors. <clears throat> Any advice for Jason as he begins that lead pastor role? Aubrey, you have served as a lead pastor. Uh, and uh, so any advice you would have, Tanner? Ugh. You've been in churches where uh, you have had pastors. Any advice you would give? And then we'll let, we'll let Jason give us any advice that he has for, uh, for us as we go forward as well. So. My main advice would be uh, as the only staff member of a church, you're the one that's got the target on your back. Uh, you know, one thing about multi-staff is, you know, you kind of share that a little bit. And uh, uh, my my advice would be be careful about what you share with your wife because the mama bear instinct that women have is she will come out roaring to protect you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's the, the, the one thing that I learned very quickly. I could not share with my wife some of my struggle in that I know how defensive she would have gotten Mm -hmm. because I'd seen I'd share something and she'd get defensive and I was I want her to enjoy the church because she's also a disciple there Mm -hmm. and uh, so that would be mine would be careful what you share Um, God will help you with that to know what to share and what not so that uh uh, then you you need to find a pastor friend, somebody that you can share that part mm-hmm. with, and they can come alongside you and say, "Let me pray with you." With it, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think first off, Jason shared um, some stuff with the deacons on on Sunday night, and then I get a chance to give him feedback. And my first feedback is, uh, "This is a Baptist church you're going to, right?" Yes. <laughs> so you had you had six points instead of three points and an illustration <laughs> for us. I had three main points and then it's sub points. points. There we go. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, I think Aubrey says it well, but also um, the best advice that I've heard um, from pastors and seen pastors lead well with is just uh, feed the flock and love them. And I know you do that well, uh, loving people. Um, and then you have such a, a deep uh, love for and um, admiration for God's word. And so I think you just being you, um, that reflects in your messages and your conversations with people. Uh, but also just, as you know, continue to be the good dad that you are. Um, mm. Because 
uh, selfishly, we're losing two really good leaders in our youth group and one upcoming one, um, and they have a chance to lead well there. But uh, your ministry and just being a good father is both from someone standing on the outside seeing what it looks like to be a good father, a ministry and almost a message in and of itself, but also as one that is contagious for that church. And so I just encourage you to keep doing those good things well. That's good. And I would uh, uh, echo those statements and just say uh, also – uh, pace yourself. One of the things I love that Alistair Begg says is uh, we overestimate what we can get done in one year, but we underestimate mm-hmm. what we can get done in five. Um, that, you know, it's a, it's the marathon, which you mm-hmm. know, you've already done that, but and you're a great at, uh, at administration and keeping things together. But to say, uh, just like here, we, we know things that we want to get accomplished, but uh, taking the long view mm-hmm. <laughs> instead, of, instead of the short view, I've got to push uh, really, really hard, being patient. Uh, mm-hmm. So, and as you love as you love your people, any advice you have for us, just in general to the whole church or to any specific staff member? If you can, you know, if you need to call any one of us three out, no, Regina's not here. I would just, love for you to call Regina out. Yeah. Oh, I have a lot I could say. Uh, no. uh, I would I, I would encourage the church one, um, be patient in the search. Um, mm-hmm. Brian knows this, as does Aubrey. Um, and Tanner, I, I know he knows this as well. Uh, I believe the statistic in just Mississippi alone, there's 2,100 Southern Baptist churches in Mississippi. And right now around 800 of those churches do not have pastors. Hmm. The statistics and percentages are not any better for ministers of music. There's just not a lot of people uh, in ministry to fill the gaps and the holes. And so be patient, be prayerful. Mm-hmm. Um, because as hard as it is to find a pastor, it's just as hard to find minister music. And I realize I'm the reason. Uh, <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah, that's right. Y'all find yourselves in the butt. <laughs> no. Um, no, the Lord is. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, the Lord is. Well, you're feeling one statistic, but you're causing right. That's right. <laughs> that's a good point. That's but right. you're going to have to be patient yeah. uh, and prayerful. Prayerful. Um, yes. As I shared the deacons Sunday night, the key in anything we do in not only our personal lives, but in the in the life of a church is prayer. And if we are not prayerful, we we cut our legs off before we get started. Mm-hmm. And so, be in prayer for that process. Be in prayer for who God has, and be patient. Um, and you know, whoever comes is gonna enjoy working with the staff here because everybody is enjoyable to work with. Yeah. Um, it, everybody loves the Lord. And that, that's the main thing. That's right. Um, and you want somebody that, that loves the Lord to come along and join you. Yeah. And, um, and I, that's, that would be my advice my, to my church, advice to church and, and to mm-hmm. y'all as well. You, yeah. Brian, you know, it, it's going to require patience. It, <laughs> uh, and, you know, uh, the last search committee called me, they know from experience mm-hmm. looking for 19 months, it's going to require patience. But yeah. more than anything, prayer. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, any Aubrey or Tanner, any advice to the church in in the search as well? Anything else to say? I mean, I'd echo that patience and uh, uh, every staff member that the church calls is important hmm. because of their role in in the church. And uh, I'd like rather for it to take a few extra months uh, than just get somebody that's talented to fulfill it and mm. then once they get here um, they don't fit they they have problems and because uh, it's a lot harder to work with a team member uh, that loves the Lord than one that doesn't so mm. don't go on talent alone go with the first qualification of loving God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. Yeah, that's good. Tanner, anything else? And I think the other one, since Aubrey said patience, I'll say prayer because I yeah. think it is important not just to pray, God send us somebody quick, <laughs> uh, but pray for right. whoever this is next, God, be preparing them now um, for and preparing and their us family. And their yeah. family, yeah, yeah for whatever right. it is, whatever move it is, whatever it may be. So yeah. just be in constant prayer, specific and, and fervent prayer. Just tied back to that, just in regard to the question. So, again, uh, 19 months for this church to find you and mm-hmm. a lot of resumes, is my understanding, mm-hmm. and uh, and they were just about to 
stop the search because of the pastor situation. Right. Uh, John had just resigned, and now it was like, well, maybe we need to wait and find pastor first. But then all of a sudden your resume showed up at the, the ninth hour, the right. eleventh hour kind of deal. Uh, and, and so uh, so that tells us right there, uh, again, it, it we need to be patient and prayerful because it, it took a long time previously. Mm-hmm. But even right now in the search you just came out of, uh, I understand that Union has been without a pastor for a little while and yeah. been looking. I a mean, little over two years. Yeah, yeah, a little over two years. And the church here was looking for a pastor. For I mean, again, these are so the processes are taking, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, a little longer than they did mm-hmm. in the past sometimes. So. There, there's a lot of people out there, but there are a few that are qualified, mm-hmm. that meet biblical qualifications, that, yeah. um, that love the Lord. There's a lot of people that can teach. There's a lot of people that can preach. There's a lot of people that can sing. And I think that's what we're finding mm-hmm. is there are just few that are truly called and qualified. Yeah. And... Um, that's where you have to be prayerful and patient. Absolutely. Or, anything else uh, you want to share? What, what are we uh, going to miss about Jason or uh, uh, about him being on the team or any favorite stories about Jason, funny or serious? We'll take any any of the above. Well, I'm going to miss him because he shared my load. Yeah. You know, we, we haven't had a full-time music uh, person. Mm-hmm. And uh, while I was helping out during uh, – that search for a pastor as well. He's really helped me Mm -hmm. and uh, shared that load on the building and working with building grounds. Uh, And so he did a lot of organization with it and did a really good job. And so I'm going to miss that because guess who has to take it back? (laughs) (laughs) That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Tanner, anything? I think um, definitely going to miss Jason and his whole family. Mm -hmm. Um, But just... Jason was such a welcoming person. The whole staff was, but um, our few walks out beneath the lakes, and I hope they can continue since you are not moving uh, out of the, the area. Um, but just conversations about life and things like that. And uh, as Aubrey was saying, I think most of our, our church knows, but if you don't know, Jason is, uh, as I said before, a Swiss Army knife, can do so much <laughs> already, has been doing for the longest time, so much um, just behind the scenes that aren't what – most would consider music ministers mm-hmm. task. Um, right. you know, we've joked about job descriptions. His would probably be a, a full 10 page essay type <laughs> job description for what all he's done. So right. we'll miss uh, his help in that, but ultimately just his um, sharing life with is yeah. what I'm going to miss the most. Mm-hmm. No funny stories, Jason. I'm sorry. Oh, that's I, right. That I feel I can share with everybody else. <laughs> yeah, some things, are, some things have to stay in. My kids don't think I'm that funny anyway. So. <laughs> well, I, you know, I could. Y'all, you, you probably don't see it, but we have got to see him uh, upset at stuff. He, he, you probably never see that publicly, but we as a staff, we get the fun thing about it is when we get by ourselves, you know, we can we can vent. And so uh, Jason can vent <laughs> when he needs to. <laughs> My kids and wife will tell you that as well. <laughs> That's it. You know, one of the things I miss on the serious side is uh, – is Jason's prayers. Jason, I've heard several people have said, you know, Jason just does a great job of leading us in, in those prayer times um, and preparing us in worship uh, as he's transitioning us out of um, the out of music into preaching and just always does a, a, a masterful job. And so that was mentioned by one of my friends who's watched us. It's mentioned by the deacons uh, uh, on Sunday, and I would echo that. Um, and then the other thing I will miss is, is Jason does – and I think the choir probably knows this even more so than our church family, but Jason has a dry wit. And, uh, and so he does have wit about him and that can be sharp and pointed, uh, but it's usually dry. It's usually said with a straight face, but uh, he, he knows how to, to, to give the right, um, uh, the, the right poke at just the right time. So he's, he's got a good sense of timing with, uh, with dry wit, which I, I think is really good. That's fun. And if anybody has taught Caleb in Sunday school, you know where he gets it from. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. All right. Jason, anything you want to share? Favorite stories or uh, uh, anything else to want to, you know, a favorite thing about working here before you, you head out? Ooh. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I wasn't prepared for that question, I guess, um, even though you told me. Um it's not because I. It's a lack of uh, things to recall. It's too just. Uh, it's just too many. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, um, we will miss everybody here. Yeah. Um, you know, when you when you love people and you mm. you want, you build relationships, you do miss them when you have to, um, you know, depart. Mm-hmm. Um, thankfully, um, you know, we'll still be here, Meridian. So hopefully, we'll get to still see right. some folks. Um, you know, stop by prayer time any time you want. That's right. (laughs) Um, you know, um, but we will miss those, those, uh, weekly interactions Mm -hmm. with people. And, um, we have enjoyed our, our time together. Mm -hmm. I know Cheryl, as much as I have with, with all of y'all and just to be able to know that for her knowing that, um, there are three other men who love us, our family love me, support right. me, encourage me. That's encouraging to her. I know it would be for your wives as well to know mm-hmm. that um, that we encourage one another and right. we, we like each other. That makes a difference. <laughs> That's right. It does make a difference. And in, in, in enjoying coming to the office, yeah. you know, that we like each other. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, those are things that, uh, that I, I will – treasure yeah. and take with me uh, as as well as the relationships we've built you know I, I don't know that I could go too deep in some funny things because I don't want to embarrass anybody specifically you know <laughs> um, you know but we have enjoyed yeah. um, everybody here we've enjoyed this church and, and as I, I tried to say and I hope I did say clear clearly um, a couple weeks ago when I made the announcement to the church um, we're going not because um, we feel led to be pushed out in any way. We're going because God is calling us mm-hmm. into uh, a different season of ministry. Um, we uh, we're going because of that. Not we we have no we have no reason other than God. Yeah, that's good to go, and that's a good reason. That's exactly <laughs> right. Absolutely, well, that's, that's good. Reason. Well, I've enjoyed the, the, the banter and the, and the discussion. I'm going to ask Aubrey to close us uh, with a prayer and pray over Jason as, uh, as we uh, wrap this one up. Sure. Father, we do thank you for Jason and uh, for these uh, years that he has put in with us. And uh, I thank you for him. I thank you for his heart. I thank you for his family. I thank you that uh, he has walked with you and he's, shown our church what a godly man is supposed to be, a godly father as he has constantly been the leader in his home. And I thank you that because of those uh, continuing examples that you've called him to lead a church now, to be that godly, uh, fatherly leader of a church. And uh, we we just thank you that uh, for his talent, uh, for his tireless work with us, as we've shouldered the burden together, and uh, we appreciate him. And uh, there's just not enough words that we can say for the uh, time that we've put together, that we've invested not only in each other, but in this church and in these people that you've called us uh, to continue to love and serve. And now he has a new challenge uh, to love and to get to know some other people and to disciple them just like he's been doing here. Father, we we pray for he and his family as they make this transition, and we pray for us as a church that we too would continually fall on our knees before you as he's led us and taught us uh, to lift you up in prayer uh, and concern for each other that we would love you and love our neighbors ourselves. In thy gracious name, amen. 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 Uh, Thank you for tuning in, and uh, we love you, and we will see you next time.